All right, everybody. I had an extremely long, um, extremely long video for the daily holds and tradings with so many things. And, oh, I don't even know what happened with different errors and things and checking data and formulas and all the trades <laughs> and just so much. So, uh, I'm going to try to get through this one as fast as I possibly can. Um, just a reminder, I am not a financial advisor or an invest any type of investment advisor. Advisor. All I'm doing is gathering the data, presenting it to you. You can get make your own decisions from that data, and you know form your own opinions. Um, but Yield Max ETFs are extremely risky. All the risks are listed on their website uh, and defined as well. Just know that these are income ETFs and are not growth ETFs. So please understand what you're invested in before you do so. Uh, just because I go over these ETFs does not necessarily mean that I invest uh, in all stocks that I cover. So we have lots of trades going on here, lots of things going on everywhere. I am not going to go uh, in depth on any of these. We have AMDY though. Um, for y'all, lucky for y'all, I guess I already went over the trades and holdings, but uh, AMDY, negative $8.5 million. They decided to uh, roll their synthetics, or the majority of them at least, and pay to close those out. AMZ, negative 43.5 thousand. Apley, negative 49,000. Um, Coney, one point. Four million, Dizzo, fifty-one thousand, Phoebe. Um, same thing here. They uh, rolled some, if not all, of our of their synthetic positions, uh, costing one point six seven point one six million dollars. GUI negative three hundred um, and fifty-four thousand, um, and yeah, this right here is not uh, even totally correct either. Uh, and we won't truly know what's totally correct till tomorrow, but I identified issues with the trades and holdings in the other video. JPMO, negative 672,000. Uh, Misty, 52,000. PayPay, 68,000. Tesla, negative 7,000. Uh, and then Crash here. This is their first trades that I'm capturing. I don't know if there were trades done the first day, maybe two. I don't remember if I missed one or two days at the beginning because I just wasn't thinking. Uh, but we have trades today. Um, so we have our synthetic. And actually, oh, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do this one because I don't even know how my formulas are set up. Yeah, so this is a synthetic. This is clearly not right. This amount in the data check is the long call and the short put. Um, so not sure. Oh, sorry. So not sure how I'm going to do that here because I'd hate to create another column um, just to put that data in it or another two columns to put that data in it. I have to look at the formulas. There's a possibility I could put the... Uh, long calls with the short calls and then maybe just put the puts in the premium column even though it's not um I don't know anyway let's move on so we have our net assets here if you want to see those net assets and outstanding shares please take a screenshot or pause the video same thing here. We have the current uh, stock price, the NAV, and the difference. So pause or screenshot. And then we have the stock prices here and uh, the changes here. I'm going to say Misty went up 2%, Squee went up 2%, and Ulti went up 3%. Everybody else was negative 1% to 1%. So just take a screenshot here if you want to look at this more in depth. And then we're going to look here uh, at the underlines. Um, 
We have the stock prices here and the IVs, except for the one Coney still hadn't loaded yet. Uh, so you can take your screenshot here if you'd like. I'm going to hide this, and then we'll look at these changes. Uh, so NVIDIA was negative 2% today, so was Tesla, okay? I didn't realize that. MicroStrategy was up 2%, and Block was up 3%. Zomo was up 2%. If we're looking at the differences here, uh, there's not much. Most of these say zero. Um of course, the market down here shows, okay, so it makes sense. I guess it was a little sideways today. You have 0.16% for the NASDAQ and 0.51% for the S&P. Um, if we look at the ones, it looks like um, AMDY did better than AMD by 1%. JPM did better than JPMO by 1%. Marnie did better, better than Moderna by 1%. NVIDIA did better than NVIDIA by 1%. Block did better than Squee by 1%. And Zomo did better than... I'm sorry. Exxon did better than Zomo did by 1%. Overall, nine of the Yelmex ETFs did better than 10... Uh, I'm sorry. Nine Yelmex ETFs did better, uh, while 10 of the underlying did better than the Yale Max ETFs. Now, I probably say everybody's favorite part. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I guess it depends on what you use this data for. You might care more for the strike prices to know where those are at or if anybody's over the max. But anyway, so I did do a, an actual video. I've been talking about this and talking about it. And today, this morning, I was sitting at the dentist office while my daughter was um, getting her braces adjusted and getting these other things that get attached to the... I don't know, the back of the teeth to help her with her bite. I don't know. Apparently, it's very painful, and it's going to be painful for a couple weeks. But anyway, it was like an hour and a half appointment. Uh, so I actually went next door and got some labs I needed to get done. And I worked on this video, or the video that did all the days to recovery. So uh, it went all the way back to inception. It has the number of days it took each month. If they did it each month, then I have some summary data. And then I have some percentages, and then I have some averages. So uh, pretty neat information, if I, at least I think so. So if you haven't checked it out already, it's out there for y'all to review. Um, but looking down here at the bottom, so it looks like YMAG went down some. So it doesn't show us being fully recovered anymore. Um, but, you know, it still was recovered. And then we have YMAX and Ulti. I do not know that they will get recovered before next week. I... I've tried, I started trying yesterday or the last couple of days to get the spreadsheet updated for WiMAX and WiMAG and I haven't even touched Ulti because uh, I know it's like, I just don't know that I'm going to get them done this month because I know I had issues with Ulti and stock prices and, and share prices and trades and issues for me to fix and try to get somewhat, um, you know, updated on the sheet in the end for WiMAG and WiMAX. I'm like struggling to recreate what I had last month for this month and then I think it might be done but I was going to work on that when I got done with here and yeah that's not happening now I should have been able to get the videos out by midnight and that didn't happen so um uh, I don't know I'll try the YMAX and YMAG video or spreadsheet again tomorrow if nothing else I'll get the bare minimum out um uh, yeah I don't know I guess it doesn't really matter. Tomorrow's Friday. Y'all won't see it till after the market closes anyway. So uh, maybe I can spend some time on it this weekend. Uh, but anyway, so here we have this. And if you don't know what I mean by days to recovery, and I know a lot of you probably hate it when I do it, but I try to at least go over one line uh, so people can understand I don't go over all of them, of course. So if we look at AIYY, it was at 1262 on May 3rd, which was the day before the ex-dividend date. As you know, or hopefully know, that stocks drop on the ex-dividend date by the amount of the dividend or distribution. 
So in this case, before the drop, it was 12.62. As of today, it's 12.26. So the difference between then and now is 36, negative 36 cents. The distribution was 41 cents. So right now, we've only recovered 5 cents of the last distribution, which is 12% of the last distribution. Therefore, it has not been recovered, uh, so it doesn't have days listed in AH or a ranking. Uh, and in fact, none of these have recovered. So that's just to give you an example. Now to look at a red one like Dizzo that just had earnings and tanked. Uh, again, 2066, then and now to 1890, difference of a negative dollar and 76 cents. But the di distribution was only 71 cents. So it has dropped an additional one dollar and five cents. Therefore, its recovery is actually negative 149% of the um, last distribution. So it dropped by the distribution amount, which was the 71 cents in column AE, and it dropped about, it dropped the additional dollar and five cents that you see in column AF. Uh, and why bets and crash, of course, I guess I should put the, I could put the stock prices in here, I guess, but uh, like this one, but they haven't had a distribution just yet. Um, and then we're going to go into these just very briefly. Um, this is just to show where we're at on our strike prices. These are for the short uh, values. Uh, as you can see, Nefli, Block, Zomo, and... Man, I forgot this section. Well, maybe I did do this one. Now, I don't know. I did look at the one red I had, but I th thought that one was right. How do I wear my app? Of course. It's just because the data... The holdings probably aren't loaded right now, which is why I always try to paste them before I do a video. And then, I don't know. I should also make this red just to look at these. But I thought these were good to go, but I don't know. But anyway, so if you're wanting to look, again, these are, these might, these are going to change tomorrow. Um... So, well, I guess that's not necessarily true. That could be a lie because I don't have expiration dates on these. So, I don't know. You'd have to actually reference the holdings video because this is just a quick roll-up, right, to know, like, here on Netflix. Yeah, they have one, but it may not expire tomorrow. It might be next week, you know. Same thing up here with Coney. Like, they have six. I know off the top of my head, this one has three that expire tomorrow and three next week. <laughs> so, that one I do know. But, um, so, but anyway, this just gives you an example of being over or under how far uh, under we are for that strike price. The, how it affects the stock price itself, um, and then the percentage to that stock price, so or ETF price. So in this example, Nefli is over its strike price by five percent. It's bringing the stock price down to seventy six cents a share, which is four point five percent. So you have that. Um, sorry, I saw Crush is still at the bottom. It threw me off, but it is in the filter. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here, except for this is going to be the synthetic positions themselves. That's why I stopped. Well, it doesn't matter at this point whether I filter them or not uh, here or sort them. But this is our synthetic position. So again, it's the same concept. Um, for example, AIYY has a $25 strike, but it is underneath that strike price by $0.70 cents, uh, or 3%. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, that is right here. The actual value to the share prices are over here in the blue. So the synthetic and AIYY's case is it's bringing down the stock price $0.24 cents a share or 2%.
Coney being the largest here. Let's just look at that one real quick. So it has a 260 strike price, and this one expires next week, I believe. And it's still 19% below the strike price. And currently, it's bringing the stock price down $5 a share or 23%. And that is it. Anyway, thanks for bearing with me. Sorry I tried to go through this as quick, fairly quickly, and then I got hung up in a couple of spots. But if you want more detail, make sure you watch the trades and holds video. Uh, if you're only wanting to look at certain ETFs, make sure you forward to the one you want. Tonight's video is extremely long. Lots of things, lots of trades going back and forth. Several errors in different places. A few formula things, but... Uh, but just make sure, especially on this video, since it's longer than normal and because there's so many trades because we're on a Thursday, you know, and things are about to expire and the synthetics expiring, uh, it just it makes it a lot longer. But at the same time, you're getting 20 ETFs covered in one video. So anyway, I will talk with you all later. Thanks for joining me and I appreciate it. Bye.